dawn. And Mount Warning awaits the first rays of the morning sun to touch the Australian mainland. most easterly point of the continent, this towering remnant of a prehistoric volcanic age overlooks one of the most beautiful areas in Australia, an area of striking contrast. The natural beauty of this small part of the east coast, lying between Byron Bay and Surface Paradise, and inland to the rainforests of the Great Dividing Range, lures thousands of tourists each year on their annual holidays. But there are those more fortunate, who have made their homes and who live and work under the watchful eye of Mount Warning. Like all fishermen, Lester Phillips has a story to tell as he skippers his prawn trawler back to port at Brunswick Heads. In 1960, I was unfortunate enough to be turned over in a boat. I was out trapping. It wasn't a small boat, it was 33 foot long. And I was coming in, I had about 500 pounds of step on my back deck. I was about to cross the bar, the bar was very shallow before the walls were built here those days. I saw this wave come and I set my deck in, grabbed the back and watched the fish. And I tried to swing the boat back out again to go to sea, but the water's too shallow, it just went sideways. When I saw the boat wave was going to catch me, I closed my door, and now what happened I was turned over. A little further north, Tom Cross, a young restaurant owner from Surface Paradise, enjoys a different type of fishing. You go scuba diving very early in the morning as a rule. We have days off in the business, of course. But the ideal time to cross bars, etc., is something like 5 a.m. in the morning. Go out, go diving, back through the bar and into work. Graham's an old friend of mine. I've uh, known him for some seven years. In fact, he's been on that, living on the Gold Coast for seven years. He immigrated from England, moved around Australia, and decided the Gold Coast where he wanted to live. He's a chef by trade. Uh, we had an opportunity to go into a business here, a restaurant, and we jumped at it. There is definitely good solid competition in any business in fact in service paradise it's good for the patrons everybody has to keep a standard quite high indeed competitive business makes for better prices the oceans on one side of service paradise on the other side are island estates they're very uh, scenic waterways a lot of the units houses etc have water frontages it's not exclusively a young person's town, but it most definitely is a young person's town. It's got a great atmosphere, it's got a playground atmosphere, it's got the water sports. Everything's very relaxed. People are coming here on holidays, they're coming here to have a good time. They do have a good time. Influences the people that live here, the young people that live here to have a good time with them. Less than an hour's drive from surfers, the little village of Billy Nudgel and the oldest licensee in Australia. At 94, Margaret Alice Ring, MBE, has a store of memories. I came down New South Wales, had a look around, and I saw Billy Nudgel. So I thought to myself, gee, that's not a bad little place. I think I could manage that by myself. Really? You'd go a long way before you would meet customers like there are in this place. They're workers and all that sort of thing, but they're really marvellous. If you hear a little bit of an argument going on, you say, shh, cut that down. And you won't hear another word from them. There used to be quite a few people that were, uh, would come in, the farmers and that of a night for two, perhaps two nights a week. And we'd play uh, solo, euchre, whatever players they were there, we'd play, you see. 
And of course we got uh, no, okay. into playing poker. And we played poker. We, and it got from, oh, two shillings up to 50 pounds. Not me, you know, but the others were. I used to have them in the back room, you see, so that if any of the police come in, well, of course, you'd be pretty safe. And um, I'd give them three knocks on the wall, you see, and, of course, they'd scatter if the police came. The Bullock team was invaluable in opening up this area, and Dan Guinea, who lives in Southport, still vividly remembers. I drive when I was 14 years of age, carried on. Oh, it was a tough country. Deep hills. There's no, there no bitumen roads at all in days. <laughs> we pulled a lot of timber out of Dale's Creek and uh, right up to the, nearly to the border. The cedar was, and up under Springbrook, we pulled a lot of cedar right up under the cliffs of Springbrook. And it all downhill like that. Nearly shoot over the top of your bullocks. You have to put drag to change around to stop them from shooting onto the bullocks. My uncle uh, Sandy Duncan and uh, my father, they were working up there near the natural lights up on the hill and uh, it was dry weather. My father said, uh, he said, Alec, he says, you better, he says, see if you can get some, go and get a billy of water, we'll have lunch. So old Sandy Duncan went right down into the waste, down it was like that into the river and he could hear a trickle of water and he walked up and up, up and he could he still hear the trickle. The last he came to the natural arch, and the water came coming over the cliff, and there was a great big round hole, and there was a, you could walk right in under, underneath it, like, like it was a natural bridge, all right. So he went back and he said, uh, he always called me Father Guinea. He said, no, Guinea, so I found a real natural bridge. Oh, yes, go on, Alec, he said. So they had lunch, and they went down, and, and they saw it. Every township has its local identity, and Coolangatta has Jack Evans. He owns a unique aquarium near Point Danger. Well, as a beach inspector at Kira Beach, uh, I had uh, uh, two, two lifesavers were attacked by sharks. One was fatally mauled, so I decided to do something about it. So I went to uh, Newcastle in an old Model A Ford I had, and I got on the shark contractor down there, had a look at these nets, and I came back and I decided then, well, I'm going to have a crack at catching these sharks. So. Uh, I got some lifesavers to help me, and I got ropes and twine, and we started to make nets on Kira Beach. Made a net, set it, and the first night I got 16 sharks. And I was amazed how many sharks were up in the surf. So I put the sharks on display on the beach, and I put a sign up, uh, Silver Coin Admission, a tent on the beach, Silver Coin Admission, have a look at the sharks, and I gave the lifesavers half the proceeds, and with the other half the money, I bought more nets and gear and what have you. So. People were getting that interested in seeing dead sharks on the beach. I decided, well, if they pay to uh, see dead sharks, well, what do they do for live sharks? So I had the building this thing, uh, I just built the Snapper Rocks bars. So I got a couple of live sharks and put them in the outside pool of Snapper Rocks bars. There was uh, three pools over there. But when a big sea had come up, it'd break over the outside pool and wash the sharks over the top of the wall and amongst the bathers, and they took a very dim view of it. This is going back uh, 20 years, which would be 1955. So that's how I started from over there, and here I am over here today. Near the natural arch in the Numanbar Valley, Colin Graham lives an almost hermit-like existence. I love the mountains. I always did like the mountains. In fact, I walked up every mountain and gully around here, and I like the mountain streams too. I love drinking that beautiful, cold, unpolluted water. This is all volcanic country. There's a big pointed rock down the road. It covers 32 acres called Egg Rock, and it is said to be the core of an extinct volcano. I've got a jo this job in the dairy farm, working at uh, for $3 uh, a week. 
that was uh, 30 bob a week in those days, Tucker. And uh, after that, I went away for a few years during the war slipper cutting, and then I came back to the valley here. I've worked in bananas and things like that. I've done a bit of cane cutting and I've cut timber too. I like timber cutting in, in the way I hate it because I hate falling a tree. I hate to, to destroy one and yet I like the work. In the main creek at Lumman Bay you get quite a few gemstones. You get the calcedony. You get carnelian, common opal, petrified wood, chert, perlite, and thunder eggs. There's quite a few thunder eggs. Some of them are very good and some of them are just studs. Nothing at all inside of them. But some of the prettiest thunder eggs I've ever seen come from the Numbar Valley. I'm an old bachelor. No, no one to fight with. <laughs> Someone asked an old bachelor one day why he didn't get married. He said, it's this way. He said, I'd rather go through life wanting something I didn't have to have something I didn't want. Less than 30 kilometres away, and with more romantic views on marriage, Jenny Maiano <clears throat> prefers a less austere lifestyle. A couple of years ago, I met my husband. He came into the shop selling jewellery, and we went from there. I didn't expect to marry an Italian or to marry anybody... Um, other than a gold coaster, that it just, it's just the way it happened. Well, we just bought a little boat, and uh, every Sunday, Tony's getting up, well, he gets up about five o'clock and goes out fishing, and then he comes back and gets me 10, 11 o'clock, and we go over to Stradbroke Island, or we putter along the canals. Uh, it's just a small boat, but we're finding, well, a whole new world in sort of boating's opened up to us. I never really, we never thought about boating until we bought this boat, and we get out there and forget all our troubles, and cruise up and down, and. Just forget everything for a day or so. there were so many boats or facilities for boats until you know, we bought a boat. A short distance to the north, Les Napper enjoys the wilds of the mangroves near Southport. Net fishing is pretty good between Southport and right the way through to the bay. Mainly mullet, uh, travelling mullet, and they school, which, you know, is most of the time. Uh, you get whiten in seasons, they come in with the tides of the moon, stuff like this, you know, you've got to know all that. It's a matter of walking in the mangroves, telling when a crab's in the hole is by the way he works the mud, or if the water's, water's dirty, he don't work it, he'll lay there, but you can tell by the way the roots have mounted in the front of the hole and he's worked it around. The method I've been taught by my dad and his dad is uh, a piece of steel about t 11 foot, 12 foot long, bent with a hook about six inches, and a handle on the other end, just bent round in the steel. That's what I use, and I've learned that since I was about eight years old. And um, I can do it pretty good, good as anyone, in fact, you know. Most fishermen know each other. Nearly all the fishermen, I would say, that the old fishermen here uh, know each other. You can you see a boat going down, you say, oh, well, that's Dux's and that's Medlin's and that's O'Connell. You know, you sort of know them all as you pass them by.
Keith Williams, a resident of the area for most of his life, started with a motorcycle accessory shop and now... I've been here on the Gold Coast now for 22 years. Well, the motor racing came along a bit by accident. Um, when I bought the original uh, property for our ski shows, uh, instead of being able to buy just the eight or ten acres that was necessary for the show, I could only buy the entire farm. Part of the complex we built an international standard drag strip. And drag racing uh, had its real birth on a professional basis uh, here at Surface Paradise. Eighteen years ago, uh, I really started in business here running a water ski school. But I could see that there was very limited scope in the uh, ski school. You can only teach so many people. And this is what prompted me to start uh, a water ski show. Four years ago, I was fortunate to obtain a lease of 50 acres from the government. Uh, uh, there's 50 acres on the spit here at Southport. Beautiful frontage to the broad water at only a mile and a half from surface paradise. And of course, it's here that we've developed SeaWorld. In this type of park, what we need is to cater for family groups. We need to have a, uh, an area where they can come and spend the entire day. Sea World to me is, is the way of life that I enjoy and that's uh, I think the all important thing if you can enjoy the work you're doing and it no longer becomes work. If you enjoy the work you're doing it no longer becomes work. These words seem to just about sum up the general feelings of the people who live and work in this holiday area which makes up this strikingly beautiful panorama to the east of Mount Warning.